In the 1970s, Led Zeppelin was probably the biggest rock band in the world, and one of the most mysterious. Zeppelin's music was exotic, slightly menacing. The band rarely did interviews, they kept their distance from the music business. The critics didn't like them, but the audience sure did. Zeppelin made millions of fans and changed rock forever, but they paid a terrible price. Led Zeppelin are legends. This is their story. One of the greatest rock and roll bands in the world. In actual fact, each album is very different. There was just nothing like us at the time. It was tripping the light fantastic. Good times, bad times, you know I've had my share. When my woman left home for a brown eyed man, but I still don't seem to care. Jimmy Page was born in 1944 and grew up in a suburb of London near Heathrow Airport. He took up guitar after hearing an Elvis Presley record. Like many young Britons, he got swept up in the skiffle craze of the late 50s. Now then, you're called what? J.G. Skiffle Group. And you come from? Epsom. What are your two names? Yours is? James Page and... David House. Both from Epsom. Yes. Well, what are you going to do when you leave school? Take up Skiffle? No, I want to do, uh, well, biological research. Do you? Mm. I do that already, in fact. What do we mean by biological research? Well, cancer, if it isn't discovered by then. Page went to art school, but soon realized that music was his true calling. He started jamming at various clubs around London. Word got around. And by the age of 20, Page was a top session guitarist recording with the likes of The Who, The Kinks, and Them. By mid-1966, Page had his fill of session work. He accepted an invitation to join the Yardbirds on bass. The Yardbirds had begun as an electric blues band, featuring a brilliant young guitarist named Eric Clapton. When the group went pop, Clapton left and was replaced by another guitar virtuoso, Jeff Beck. Before long, Page moved from bass to guitar. I started on, on the bass for, just to help them out, and then we got into the dual lead guitars, and it was fantastic. <laughs> Jeff Beck had ambitions beyond the Yardbirds. He put together a session featuring Jimmy Page, a studio musician named John Paul Jones, and Who drummer Keith Moon. It sounded great, and the musicians talked about forming a new band. Moon joked that if they did, they should call the group Led Zeppelin because it would go over like a lead balloon. In late 1966, Jeff Beck quit the Yardbirds, leaving Jimmy Page by himself in the lead guitar spotlight. When Jeff left, and we, and we carried on. Um, well, the pure nature of the band, they had lot numbers that, you know, you could really stretch out in. And uh, during the time that I, that I was in there, it's, it's just a uh, guitar, then it was a four-piece. Around this time, the Yardbirds acquired a new manager. His name was Peter Grant. And before he took control of the group, he received a cautionary warning from their outgoing manager. Peter, he said, there's only uh, one big problem with the band. There's a guy and he's a real smart ass, a real wise guy. I said, oh really, who's that? He said, Jimmy Page. So I said, oh, I see. And I thought, well, I thought, he must know I know Jimmy since 1962, 63. So when I met with the Yardbirds, I said, Jimmy, I hear you're a troublemaker, and a pain, I've got to get rid of you. What have you been up to? Peter Grant was an imposing figure, a former pro wrestler who had grown up in the streets. Nobody crossed him twice. He had previously worked as UK tour manager for acts like the Everly Brothers. Grant saw all the ways musicians were ripped off by promoters, agents, and record companies. He was not going to let it happen to his boys. Grant and Page saw eye to eye from day one. In 1967, the Yardbirds were performing the trippy I'm Confused, a variation of a song called Dazed and Confused from an album by Jake Holmes. Page produced eerie sounds by trailing a violin bow across his guitar strings. It would become the song's trademark.
KJ breathed new life into the Yardbirds, but the original members were tired, disillusioned, and feeling that their best days were behind them. The other Yardbirds quit in the summer of 1968. Grant got them to sign ownership of the Yardbirds' name over to Jimmy Page. And there was a big row, and I sat down and drafted the thing out, and that's when they signed the name of the Yardbirds over to Jimmy Page. I just really wanted to carry on rocking, you know. I had this great, uh, you know, stockpile of you know, material in my mind and sort of songs and riffs that I'd got written down on tape at the time. So it was really handy, yeah. I knew what way I wanted the group to go as well. If I could get a group together, fortunately I did. Jimmy Page and Peter Grant looked at what was happening in British rock. It was the year of the power trio, Cream, the Jimi Hendrix Experience. The Jeff Beck group and the Who were guitar trios fronted by good-looking blonde singers. Page went looking for a charismatic frontman. He heard about a kid from the country called Robert Plant. I was playing at a teacher's training college in Birmingham, and I had a telegram saying that the guitarist from the Yardbirds wanted to come and see me. I thought somebody was pulling my leg. When Page first heard Plant perform, he saw a 19-year-old kid with flowing blonde hair and incredible bravado. He found Plant's vocal range unbelievable. But Page figured that Robert must have a rotten personality. Why else was he not already successful? Soon Page got to know Plant and found him charming and witty. He knew he had hit the jackpot. Jimmy had traveled America and he was somewhat of a star. So I was walking into somebody's home who'd been around and was that much older than me and had an American woman there, scantily dressed and gorgeous. And there I am with an old battered suitcase going, what oh mate? Plant urged Page to check out his pal and teenage bandmate John Bonham. There was no drummer like him. Jimmy rang me up and said, like, and I thought, this is unusual, Jimmy calling me, spending money on the call. So I said, I saw a drummer, heard a drummer last night. He said, you're so unbelievable, we just got to get him. And that was John Bonham. The son of a carpenter, John Bonham was born in 1948 and grew up near Robert Plant. His mother bought him his first drum at the age of 10. As a teenager, he knew the meaning of hard work. He also knew that playing the drums was the only thing he was really good at. Bonham had worked construction, building up enormous strength that he loaded into his drum playing. Off stage, he was a hard drinking, hard living wild man. His outrageous antics would earn him the nickname Bonzo. His explosive drumming would set a new standard for rock and roll. My wife happened to see an item in Disc uh, magazine which said that uh, Jimmy Page was forming a band. And she says, you're going mad doing all, all these sessions, like call him up, see if he needs a bass player. John Paul Jones was born John Baldwin to a musical family in 1946. As a teenager, he fell under the influence of jazz bassist Charles Mingus. By 1965, he was one of the top session bassists and arrangers in London. The records he arranged for Herman's Hermits sold 12 million copies. He just had a big international hit playing on Donovan's Hurdy Gurdy Man. The first time we ever played together was in a tiny room in Gerrard Street. And I turned up and got the address and they said, uh, we all looked at each other and said, well, what should we play? <laughs> so I said, well, what do you know? I said, well, I don't know anything, you know, I'm doing sessions all day. I don't know. So he said, well, we do a number with the Yardbirds called The Train Kept Rolling. I said, great, how does it go? Yeah. Oh, well, it sort of starts in this and it goes there. All right. So three, four, and literally the room just exploded. It was like the most thrilling thing ever. Page and Jones, the two studio pros, jammed for several weeks at Jimmy's home with Plant and Bonham the kids from the sticks. It was an unusual marriage of innocence and experience. Jimmy Page, John Paul Jones, and manager Peter Grant were ambitious professionals who saw an opening and were ready to do whatever it took to win. Plant and Bonham were boys from the North Country, excited to be along for the ride. Page, Plant, Jones, and Bonham embarked on a short tour of Scandinavia as the New Yardbirds. The power these four created on stage was beyond anything the Yardbirds had